everybody. Today I'm going to talk about some of the more unusual mechanics of floating for small objects. So in other words, for objects at what's called low bond number. This started because I was playing around with some super hydrophobic coatings in my lab and I saw something quite odd, something I didn't immediately understand. And this inspired me to make this short video. So let me start with an interesting demonstration involving two small wood disks. These two wood disks are identical, except that the disk on the right has been sprayed with a super hydrophobic coating. In other words, a coating that is highly water repellent. And the disk on the left is just untreated wood. I'll include a link to the super hydrophobic coating that I used in the description. So this is the uncoated disk floating in water. And this is the hydrophobic disk. Here's what puzzles me about this. You can see, or I hope you can see, that the hydrophobic disk floats much higher in the water. But according to standard Archimedes principle, both disks should float at the same level. Each disk should sink into the water until the downward weight of the wood is exactly balanced by its buoyancy force. And that buoyancy force is equal to the weight of the water displaced by the disk. But both disks are identical. They have the same size and weight. So you would expect both disks to displace the same volume of water and float with their water lines at the same level. But clearly, they don't. In case you thought that was some sort of optical illusion, here's a side view. You can see that the, the disc with the super hydrophobic coating floats much higher in the water than the uncoated disc. That means that the uncoated disc is displacing more water in order to float. But both discs have the same weight. So how can this be? What's going on? In order to explain this effect, I need to talk a bit about surface tension and wettability. Surface tension is the force that causes small liquid droplets to form into spheres. It's like a rubber membrane on the surface, like the membrane on a balloon. There's a tension on the surface and it's caused by the cohesion of the water molecules. Water likes to stick to itself. But when you put water on a surface, you get different behaviors depending upon the wettability of the surface. For hydrophobic surfaces like this lotus leaf, water is more attracted to itself than the surface, so the water tends to form individual droplets. And if you looked at the line where the water contacted the leaf, you'd see that the contact angle was greater than 90 degrees. That's the characteristic of a non-wettable surface. But most common surfaces are not like that. For most common surfaces, water is more attracted to the surface than to itself. Like water on the unwaxed hood of a car. In that case, if you were to look at the line of contact where the water meets the hood, you'd see that the contact angle was less than 90 degrees. In this case, we say that the water wets the surface. So what does all this have to do with these floating wood disks? Well, water wets the untreated wood disk, as you can see in the video. This means that where the water meets the wood at the surface here, you get a contact angle less than 90 degrees and water is drawn up into the meniscus. But remember that there's a tension in this surface here. So if you look at the forces on the disc, we have, of course, the weight of the disc acting downwards. That's balanced in part by the hydrostatic pressure on the bottom of the disc caused by the water. But because water wets the disc, the surface tension force acts, at least in part, downward. So when it's floating, the pressure on the bottom surface has to counteract both the weight of the disc and the surface tension T, the vertical component of the surface tension. Now let's compare this to the situation for the super hydrophobic coated disc. Here the water doesn't wet the disc, so the free surface bends downward, as you can see in the photo here, and we get a contact angle greater than 90 degrees. 
So now when you look at the forces, because we have a tension in this surface here, the surface tension, the surface tension acts upwards. This means that the disc doesn't need to displace as much water to balance its weight. If it doesn't need to displace as much water, then it floats higher in the water. This is a sketch of the calculated results. This is the wetted disc, and this is the hydrophobic coated disc, the non-wetted surface. You can see that the super hydrophobic disc floats substantially higher in the water. The reason, of course, is that the surface tension acts downward on the wetted disc and upward on the unwetted disc. So the takeaway is that standard Archimedes principle alone doesn't really apply here. You have to include surface tension effects when you're dealing with small objects. And you've probably seen this kind of thing before. Surface tension effects can be really quite large and allow objects that are many times heavier than water to float, like razor blades and paper clips. And of course, this effect is not explained by Archimedes' principle. But for completeness, I should mention that Archimedes' principle can be generalized to include the displacement by the meniscus. I want to keep these videos short, so that'll be a subject for another video. For those that watched this far, I thought it'd end with 30 seconds of eye candy. This is a cool visualization technique. This is the first video I've done that wasn't for a course that I was teaching. I'm planning on doing some more explainer type videos. So if you like this video, please hit subscribe.